what's the best MSRP NVIDIA GPU that's available right now? I strongly think that it's the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte and I'm gonna show you some numbers today that I think make it look pretty good, specifically around inference, also video gen and image generation. So we're gonna look at that today. We're gonna to compare it to some 4090s. We got two 4090s that we'll just run those numbers really quick. And you can have a kind of relative performance indicator for the 5060 Ti's and how well they're performing. So we're gonna be running models that fit completely in GPU memory. And we'll take a look at that comparison on this system. So we're gonna, open a terminal here really quick. We'll just uh, run this and get the statistics for Llama Bench off of these three models. Oh, wow, that's, whoa, that's so fast. So you can see the 30B A3B, that's the latest Quinn Coder Instruct in Q6K with flash attention turned on there got 3,570 tokens per second on prompt processing and 142 on token generation. The next one that we tested was the Gemma 3 12B Q8. Yeah, the tokens, 6,691 prompt tokens per second. As far as token generation though, only 54 tokens per second. And the final one that we were checking here is Mistral Small and this is the 3.2 24B and we have that at Q8. The prompt tokens per second is 3,063 and 31.7. A little bit of additional testing in another popular application, and this is Comfy UI. By default, like I'm demonstrating today, only use one of your GPUs. So of course, a 4090 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM is a pretty good GPU for this. Only the 5090 would be better. So I uploaded a picture that I generated of a kitten that looks just like my kitten did at one point in time. The negative prompt, I have no idea what it says, but uh, basically just leave that alone. So our prompt is high contrast. A fluffy bat black kitten is walking on the edge of a window softly. It is looking outside at a gentle rain. Birds flutter outside the window, capturing the kitten's attention. The camera slowly moves to the left capturing the blend of curious, playful kitten energy and the windowsill and outside are highly detailed. So it'll take a good amount of time to have this happen. 37 minutes and 18 seconds. This is definitely, in my opinion, way better than the quality that we got with WAN 2.1 when we looked at that kind of in depth several months ago. And okay, so there's a crow or a crackle. Uh, it looks like a crow flying in the kitten looks playful around it, and that is not exactly what the prompt was. The bird should have been outside, so this is actually kind of confusing that the bird is inside with the kitten. However, I would say that this is pretty darn good. I mean, the quality of what is produced is really good. Look at the attention to detail on the window, some of just what could be considered aging uh, patina that you have on the window. The interior of the window frame being metal and kind of reflective there is also noted. The bird and the cat having kind of a playful stare down. In Windows, I'm surprised that it got done that fast. Now, of course, we're gonna be testing all of this stuff out also in Linux, so make sure you hit like and subscribe so you can actually catch that comparison because I have said it a lot of times, but I think showing it might help get some people over the hump of, I have to use this in Windows. Windows performance is gonna be handicapped compared to what the performance you're gonna get in Linux is, and I will show you that in an upcoming video. So let's go ahead and move on and check out some additional things with image generation now. A couple of more data points here. To load in, it took 21.6 seconds for our Cowboy Lizard, and the second run of that took 13.23. And if we just make a, uh, additional change here and run it. You should see the time's actually probably gonna be closer to the 14 second time frame for it to generate. The first time it runs, it has to load it in. But yeah, our, uh, I, I gotta say the 4090's really good, very fast. This is a 1024 by 1024. Our cowboy hat wearing a lizard there, he's, he's just moving on through. He's not looking to cause any trouble. Now we're gonna throw the 5060 Ti's in and see how they perform. All right, let's get out our 5060 Ti's. And I do like that these are very compact little two slotters. And this is basically a very small board. So 
this and the cooler here, not a really hot uh, GPU. So it's, it's actually hopefully gonna be very, very quiet. I have my expectations set for around you might think this is me shooting a little optimistic, 50% of the performance that we saw on the 4090s out of these two. If we hit that, I would call that a pretty big win as far as the performance. However, I expect that it also could be up to four times slower. So we've got something to test and see here. Drop your guesses down below before you watch any more. So one of the things I really like about these is the use of eight pin. I've never really felt that great with the 16 pin. So eight pin is great. It's a true two slaughter, doesn't stick over anywhere, has some bevel on the sides for drawing air in and drafting it a little bit. It looks like probably not going to be that hot. One HDMI, three display ports, of course, 5060 Ti and PCIe Gen 5. So this uh, motherboard that I've got over here has, of course, with the Threadripper 7995WX on the ASUS WRX90 Sage. It is a great motherboard. But yeah, the uh, PNY GeForce RTX 5060 Ti, we're gonna test this out, we're gonna test these out, and we're gonna see what kind of performance we can get on those same exact tests. Comically large compared to the 5060. TI, comically large. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and run the same three models that fit fully into GPU VRAM here. And we're gonna exact same commands, everything. See what kind of tokens we get for prompt and for token generation here. Definitely see that the 5060 Ti already kicking up a lot in the like 47% range for utilization. And that was 1,567 prompt tokens per second. And text generation, it did 92.67. That's pretty decent. And that, of course, was on Quinn 3 Coder 30B A3B Instruct Q6. Next up, Gemma 3 12B Q8. And that prompt tokens per second was 2,402. And let's see what the token generation looks like here. It does really look like it holds the utilization very well. And that was 26. So that's actually a big drop off there from what we saw with 92. Definitely the Quinn style mixture of experts, probably something that's gonna work out pretty well from what I'm seeing there. And after that, our Mistral test, and we've got 1,302 prompt tokens per second being generated. 16 tokens for generation. Now that's Mistral small 3.2. So there you have quite a bit of information about this. Now let's go into some of the same video and image workflows. And with just one 5060 Ti working here, first up, we've got the Flux One Crea Dev loaded in. So let's just give that one a run really quick. This is the image generation for the cowboy hat lizard. Definitely slower, definitely slower. We'll do a couple more runs after this so that we can see what the actual speed would be. Oh, that's a good one. And we'll get another generation done here so that we can see how fast that comes in at. That first one, it looks like the prompt executed in 48 seconds, so quite a bit slower versus the 4090. Oh yeah, that one's definitely got a smile to it there also. So that was 41, about 42 seconds, 48 seconds for the first one, so I would call that somewhere in the mid 40s. I think it's pretty safe to say that that's a, that's a good range. So let's move on to video generations. Okay, and we're running. And that is certainly peaking the utilization at 100% and holding it there. Okay, so it is three hours later, but we do have the finished rendering here. I, I can only say, I hope it's not something weird. 
It's a very slow motion pan of a cat. Okay. Now I could actually see that maybe in like a cat commercial. This is actually really good. The slow pan up is not exactly what I was asking for. I don't see any birds. Honestly, that's not that bad. I would say the quality on that is surprisingly good for open source. It took a long time, but at least the quality of the output for taking that long, I mean, if you're dealing with video rendering, that's really what matters. All right, let's move on to the comparison. So if we're looking at what the actual differences were between the two, it was basically around where I had called, maybe a little higher in one per particular, extremely stressful on a GPU manner, but we'll talk about that when we get to the video generation. So to really quickly give you guys a conclusion, I, I thought the 5060 Ti did a really good job for the price. Again, I said at the beginning of this MSRP, and there are not a lot of GPUs that are available at MSRP. The 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte is in the size range I think is considerable, is worthwhile to consider, and it also is new, which a lot of people are looking for, new GPUs. So I wanted to review this, and this was actually the first time that I really thought to myself, I should talk to people about Windows more than Linux, because I think a lot of the Linux people might know some of this. Of course, we'll be diving into this further with our eventual video, comparing these exact same tests against Linux, which you're gonna see, there's some improvement there. There's definitely some improvement. But if you look, it's about 2.5 times faster, the 4090 versus the 5060 Ti. So that those are the dual configuration of those. At the same time, it's a huge price difference. Can you get a 40, I don't even know what you can get a 4090 for here, but a 5060 Ti, $430, that's actually not that bad compared to, I'm gonna guess at least 1500 or so for a 4090. So I think 2.5 times difference for the price and the difference in the age and just the availability, I think, you know, if you're looking for warranty and stuff like that, probably you would be interested in something new. 4090s, of course, not exactly new anymore. The inference token generation was substantially better for the 5060 Ti. I was actually surprised to see Quincoder 30B, A3B, Q6, not a Q8. Again, I wanted to make sure it fit fully in GPU VRAM and not spilling over. Of course, 32 gigabytes, the constraint there, not the 48 that the dual 4090s had. So I made sure to scale it down to comparable size, 93 tokens per second versus 142. And if you're looking at the times faster, it's about 1.7 times faster to have a 4090 than a 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte. That's really not that bad at all. It looks like that was the best comparison that we got as far as numbers between the two. Moving on to video generation. So there is a huge difference between PCIe 5 and PCIe 4 as far as total bandwidth. The 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte is an X8 width, so that is going to impact your maximum available uh, bandwidth. However, it's only got 128 bit bus, so that's actually kind of slow already. So when you're thinking about those two factors, that's why you're seeing such a huge difference in the video generation capabilities. So if you had a 5090, it would beat out the 4090 here also, and we saw 2,220 seconds per video. That was almost five times faster than a 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte. So if your primary use case or very high level use case is video generation with things like WAN 2.2, the 14B, not the lower quality 5B, I really just don't think that that's a model that anybody's gonna use for anything other than novelty. But the 14B, yeah, I definitely can see people using that for a lot of things five times faster, you would definitely wanna factor that into your consideration. Next up is image generation, and 13-ish seconds for an image off of 4090, and 42 seconds for a 5060 Ti, that is a lot slower. It's about 3.2 times slower. Again, you're only using one GPU for video generation and image generation, when you're running this on Windows through Comfy UI by default, there may be ways around that to use additional GPUs at the same time. For video generation, it's like Ulysses and Linux is how I know how you can go about doing that. And there may be ways in Windows, but you're probably gonna have to jump through quite a few hoops. So I really think overall, the 5060 Ti, a great GPU for the price. Do like the fact that it only requires an eight pin connector on this one. I don't know on all of them, but definitely this one, eight pin, I think that's great. 
So I look forward to reading what you have to say and definitely drop a comment down below. Big shout out to our channel members, you guys, buying me coffees, really buying me a GPU is more like it. Thanks, big hats off to you guys. Everybody have a great rest of your day and I will check you out next time.